So, uh, the emergency clinic. Right, well, I'm a GP in South London, unfortunately, and I just want to tell you a little bit from my experience, and some of you may not know, but I used to be head of the Royal College of GPs, which is actually the head of 50,000 GPs across uh, Great Britain, really. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about my experience, but mainly about, of course, the NHS. Now, the tail end of last year, there was a Times a front page, and the front page was an unnamed Tory saying, the NHS Act 2012 was our worst mistake and a huge st strategic error. I'm sure some of you remember that. And this unnamed Tory, who I know who it is, went on to say that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor both failed to realise the explosive extent of the plans that Lansley had drawn up. And one Tory insider said it was unintelligible gobbledygook and went on to say that no one apart from Lansley had a clue what was really going on, certainly not the Prime Minister. Well, they should have known, because I told them. I told them repeatedly. I told them in conferences, I told them in articles, I told them in meetings. I warned them of the risk of their plans. I warned them that the plans they had would dismantle the NHS. I warned them that the changes were unnecessary, were expensive, and that we could ill afford it. I warned them that it would lead to frag a fragmented health service. I warned them that their health reforms, in inverted commas, would risk us losing sight of the patient, you and me, as a person, at the heart of care, and not as commodities to be bought and sold in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I warned them that we were moving the language of care into the language of the market. I warned them that repeatedly. I urged them to listen. I urged Lansley to listen, and it is on record that I said, listen to doctors, listen to health experts, and listen to patient groups, and do things differently. But he didn't listen. They didn't listen, but they did know. They just thought we wouldn't notice. Now, it wouldn't be so sad if it, was, if it was only just a terribly expensive mistake. We've had many of those, certainly over the course of my lifetime, and we would have just brushed it off. But these reforms are damaging us. They're damaging the health service. These reforms are damaging general practitioners. They're damaging all the staff that are working in the health service. You've heard from Siobhan. But most importantly, they're damaging the patients that we serve. The NHS is withering away. Reductions in funding, the expansion of commercial companies is leaving our NHS weaker, weaker than at any other time in its history. And the squeeze is affecting us all. What you'll probably notice is queues. Queues whether to see a GP, queues in an ambulance outside A&E departments, Queues on trolleys waiting to be seen inside the A&E department. Queues at home waiting for someone to answer your phone. Queues, it is what exemplifies the NHS at the moment. The NHS was born out of war and strife. It helps <coughs> heal a nation. It provides us with a link to the past. It helps bind us together as a nation. The NHS constitution says it belongs to the people. It is paid for by us, for us. It is a democratic service providing universal health care. The NHS belongs to us. Vote Labour next Thursday or lose the NHS.